Hey guys, I know a lot of times it looks like the tomatoes I have here in the greenhouse are just hanging in midair, but that's not exactly the case. They are suspended from the purlins up at the top. Generally with bale and twine, that's what I use most of the time. What I'm gonna do right now is go through real quick, show you what I use, and then we'll go outside and take a look at the trellis that I made for last year. Looking at this first plant here, you can see how far back the bucket is from it. There's about a four foot space in there where this plant has been dropped down and allowed to make that turn and keep going back up. This is one of the advantages to having a system where you can drop the plant down if you're in a long duration process where your plants are gonna be growing 10, 15, 20 foot. You can do it with a single stem method as long as you have a way to drop the string down from the ceiling and also swing that plant to the side. This particular variety right here is Geronimo. It's one that I wanted to demo this year just to try it out and see how well it stood up to some of the disease problems I had, specifically the fungal diseases, and it has done extremely well. Up there at the top, you can see the roll of things that I have in place. This allows the twine to be unrolled or unspooled a little bit at a time to drop that plant down. I used these outside last year on the big beef tomatoes and they work pretty good up to a point. As the vines got heavier and heavier, it seemed like the twine was kind of waxy and it would begin to cut itself into the spool and the plants would go ahead and start to sag down from the, uh, the cable up top. Looking at this up top, this is what I would have a lot of times. I would have my twine wrapped around the purlin. Those are the horizontal pieces that secure your hoops in place. These are the little brackets that uh, hold everything nice and snug. I would have my twine tied around the top with a tag in, and what I would do is come in and loosen it and drop that plant down. And then I was getting into a problem down at the bottom. That stem had nowhere to go. So I went and ran me a wire across here, heavy galvanized wire, and I put these rollers back on it. And they're real easy to work with. These rollers right here are not expensive. I think probably just a couple of dollars a piece or something like that. They work pretty good. Uh, you can just take the weight off of it, open it up, let it go one turn and drop your plant down. And you can also, because of the wire up here, you can slide this thing to the side and be able to stay in control of your stem and keep it going all in the same direction. This is the twine that I've been using here in the greenhouse, the, the variety. I get it from the local feed store. It's about $21, $22 a roll, 20,000 feet on here lasts a very long time. I just finished up the, uh, the first roll I ever bought and this is a brand new roll right here. And this stuff is extremely strong and works great with the trellis clips. These are the trellis clips that I talk about. The one on the left hand side is the jumbo size. They come in two sizes. You got a standard and a jumbo. I prefer to use the jumbo here in the greenhouse because a lot of times the plants just grow so well and they got the great big thick stems on them and I want to give that stem room to grow. I don't want to be trying to choke it down. If you're not used to having the very big uh, plants or you're doing something like cucumbers, uh, peppers, maybe even pole beans, anything you want to go vertical, the little standard trellis clip right here, that will work just fine. Where do you get them from? I've ordered from a few different places. I know uh, Morgan County Seeds has them, growersupply.com, they have them, Johnny Seeds, Hydro Gardens out there in Colorado, I think they sell them along with all that fertilizer. A lot of different places to buy these things. Just look up Trellis Clip and pick the one that you want based on the price and the shipping. I think they're pretty much all the same stuff. The only difference I see in some of them is the color. You can get green and red and uh, you might be able to get even the black. I think I've seen that before somewhere. The way this works, You've got a V right here in the middle, and as that closes up, that will lock around the twine first, and then you got your latch up at the end. So you lock the twine in here, and then the top will lock around your stem. With a piece of twine in here, I'll close it up, and that's going to make a nice snug fit. That's not going to pull through, and you've got your stem secured to the twine, held in place very nicely. When you get ready to put your trellis clips on, Generally, you're going to come up here, make sure your string is behind your cluster of tomatoes. You don't want the string to be on the outside pushing up against this. And you're going to take your clip, put it on here, put the string in the groove, come right up under the leaf node, put it around there, and lock that thing in place. Very simple. Looking at it from the other side, this is the end bucket here that I was just showing. You come out of the bucket and you got about a four foot span right here 
where the stem is coming out uh, horizontally before it makes that vertical turn back up. This is why you need a system where you can move the top laterally. If you have your twine tied up to the top in a specific area and you try to drop it straight down, there's no place for this stem to go. It's going to try to go all over the place. So if you have a system where you can go to the right, make everything go in one direction, that's how the guys in the greenhouses get everything to look nice and neat. Looking at this roller up close, it comes in two parts. You've got a spool and then you've got the wire. You can buy the replaceable spools if you use up all the string. I would probably suggest going with that baling twine and put it on here because it's a lot less waxy. This stuff right here tends to, as it gets warm and the plants get heavy, it wants to cut in and ends up, the vine starts to come down a little bit. Then you have to roll it up, tighten it up some more, and uh, try to get the plant back up to where you wanted it to be. But they work pretty cool. Just squeeze the wire in. That'll release the spool. Let it go. Notch comes back around here, stops on this wire. Uh, I think these work very well with plants that are not so heavy. When you get a fully loaded tomato plant, um, like I said, I think it would be better off with a different type of twine on here. When it comes to securing the string at the bottom, there's a lot of things you could do. You could drill a little hole right here through your bucket and tie it off. I just wrap it around where the handle's at and uh, let it go. If you're doing this in the ground, you can drive a stake in the ground and secure it to that. Or if you wanted to, you could uh, pick this bucket up and just run it up on the bottom and set it back down. Once it starts to grow and you get it secured, uh, the weight of the plant is gonna keep it in place. This is the trellis that I had last year that I had those big beef tomatoes on. And as I recall last year, I said I was gonna plant something else here this year. I don't want to come back with tomatoes in the same spot unless I don't have any other choice. So what I have this year are two rows of pole beans. I got the Fortex beans on the left side here and on the right is some red cranberry beans sent to me from a guy out in California. What this is really for all intents and purposes is a souped up clothesline. On each end I have 4x4 four four posts concreted in the ground and the top of the posts are notched so that they will accept the 4x4 the four four cross piece. You can see where I notched the post a little bit to allow that thing to come together better and also have a ledge for the, uh, the cross member to rest on. Going through it, I've got a very long eye bolt. That's what uh, joins the two and I also put some three inch screws in there, wood screws, to help hold it a little bit. The wire that I use is a heavy galvanized wire that I got from Lowe's. I don't remember the size of it, but I remember thinking at the time that it wasn't very expensive. To attach the wire, to the eye bolts, I'm using these turnbuckles right here. They're adjustable. You can tighten them up and increase the tension on your wire. But also, I generally don't trust things like this uh, long term because I've had so much problem with a cheap, poor quality metal. So I've got a piece of wire going through here where I've got the, uh, the long strand hooked to and goes over the top to the eye bolt on the other side. That way, if this failed, my wire would still hold it. To anchor my post on each end, in the ground, I have a 30-inch mobile home anchor. Being a mobile home guy, hey, I ought to know about the anchors, right? This is designed to anchor mobile homes, so I figured it ought to be enough to hold up a few tomatoes or whatever other vegetables I grow. I've got that screwed into the ground, the wire coming down from the top of each post, and again, I've got turnbuckles right here hooked into the anchor, and just like up at the top, if this turnbuckle fails, I put wire through the, uh, each piece, and secured it back to the anchor. I just, whatever reason, I don't trust these things. With such a long span, I needed to have some kind of support, so this is the supports that I made up. My supports are made out of top link chain rail fence pipes, and they are swaged on the end. So what I do is I take a scrap piece, drive it into the ground, and then take this, stick it right in there. This will be right at ground level, and this will keep these things in place. Very easy to work with, and it allowed me at the end of the year to pull it out and then pull these pipes up and be able to get up under there and uh, clean everything up. And to connect the temporary supports, you can get this little bracket in the section where you have the chain link fence at. It's got a bolt that goes all the way through. Comes out the other side, put your nut on there, tighten it down. And what I did, this also has two holes here. I went back and put two self-tapping screws in here to make sure everything stayed in place. 
So we'll make believe that I've already got my two pieces of pipe in the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing in place and just stand it straight up like that. If I had the pipe in, just lift it up a little bit, set it right down, and then come along the top with a couple of pieces of wire to secure this in place. All right, guys, that's how I do my trellising here in the greenhouse. I do the tomatoes, pole beans, the cucumbers here in the greenhouse essentially the same way. I've tied my twine up to the top to the purlin, drop it down, use those trellis clips to secure the plant stems to the twine. It works out extremely well. And if you want to have a situation where you can lower that twine, I would suggest going to some type of roller or something where you can unspool it and move it laterally to keep all of your stems going in one direction. It works out pretty good. So I hope that was helpful. Y'all take care and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. If you found this video to be helpful, informative, entertaining, or just downright funny, don't forget to subscribe.